Are you ready? Here we go, 5.1. We are moving into chapter 5, and we're looking at mid-segments <clears throat> and also coordinate proofs. So our essential question is, how do I use properties of mid-segments? So first we need to figure out what a mid-segment is, and then what are its properties, and then how do we use it? And then secondly, we're gonna look at uh, writing coordinate proofs. So first of all, mid-segments. Mid-segment goes midpoint to midpoint on a triangle. So how do we know that this is a midpoint? Because uh, these two segments are congruent to each other. So this point is halfway uh, down this uh, side. And so therefore this is the midpoint and same thing over here. These two segments are congruent. Therefore, this is the midpoint. And this dude right here is called a mid-segment. Do I dare find a highlighter? And let's go ahead and highlight that dude. That makes sense, doesn't it? So there is your uh, mid-segment going from midpoint to midpoint. And though it seems like a, like a rather simple, a uh, little interior uh, segment, yet there are some very cool characteristics about that mid-segment, and in particular there are two. One is that uh, this mid-segment is parallel to the third side, so these two segments here are parallel to each other. It will always be that way. And also the length of this mid-segment is half of the length of the third side. So the mid-segment is parallel to the third side and it is half the length of the third side. Very cool, very helpful. So therefore, if we are given an example like this and we are told either that these two points are uh, midpoints on the sides or if we were just told like we are here, that segment DE is a mid-segment of this triangle. That's all we need to know, to know that these two segments are parallel and also that the mid-segment is half of the length of the third side. So we take the third side, it's 26. Half of that would be, what is that, 13? So this length is gonna be 13 for your mid-segment. You know that for sure, it will always be the case, does not matter what kind of triangle it is, as long as it's the mid-segment, we are good to go. And here we are told this is also a mid-segment of this triangle. And so therefore these two uh, segments are parallel. And let's see, our mid-segment is half of the length of the third side. So if they give us the length of the uh, mid-segment, what do we do to find the length of the third side? And you are right, we multiply the mid-segment by 2. So if the mid-segment is 5, then the third side is going to be 10. And here we go. We're also told here that this mid-segment, this is a mid-segment of this uh, triangle. And so this guy over here is 6. And so this guy over here is what? Is that, is that 3? Right? Is it half of the length of this guy? No, 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 wait a second. It's double, right? So I take this 6 and I multiply it times 2 and that gives me 12. Is that right? No, wait a second. Mid-segment, it, it, remember it's parallel and half the length of the third side. Ah, so we're talking about the third side, but we're looking here at one of the other sides. So then how do I know? How do I know what the length of this one, this segment is? I do know this one is 6, but how do I know what the length of this one is? Well, I do know this is a mid-segment. And what do we say about a mid-segment? It goes from midpoint to midpoint. So, hey, this is the midpoint of this third side. Therefore, this, this point is in the middle of this uh, segment. I said third side, didn't I? I mean, I didn't mean third side because this is the third side. But uh, this is the midpoint of this side. And so... Uh, therefore, this segment on the left is going to be congruent to the segment on the right. So what is the value of x? It is 6. So watch that. Don't just get in this monkey 
blind um, mechanical robot mode of either multiplying uh, by two or dividing by two. Uh, make sure that you think and you know what you are doing. Example number one here, we are told that uh, this segment UV is a mid-segment of the triangle and we're also told that uh, VW is also a mid-segment of the triangle. So let's start out with this one. So VW is 57 inches long and so uh, these two segments are going to be parallel uh, to each other and also the mid segment is half of the length of the third side so you take that length of the mid segment multiply it times 2 and so this third side is going to be 114 you can kind of see it here can't you that this is a parallelogram we're going to learn that later this guy is a parallelogram uh, the two sides are parallel to each other and also these two opposite sides are congruent so this length here is 57, this length here is 57, and because this is a midpoint, um, yeah, I mean, uh, let me just tell you that it is, but uh, um, the mid segments go in midpoint to midpoint. But uh, in order for this uh, side, the segment here, to be parallel to the bottom side, uh, therefore this is going to be the midpoint. So see how this 57 slides over to the left and it's also half of the entire uh, length. So if you can kind of visualize that, it might help you to understand uh, mid-segment. So this third side is 2 times 57, which is 114. And here we are given the entire length <clears throat> of the, the one side. So it's mid-segment, you can think of it that way. Uh, this side, its mid-segment is going to be half of that length. So take this uh, 90 and divide it by 2, it gives you 45. And uh, this is the midpoint of that side. So therefore this is going to be 45. And notice that these two are both 45. Um, if that helps to connect those together. Okay, you are ready now for question number one and question number two on the notes and you should be able to do that. So think about those things. I'm not going to spoon feed you like I've done before. Let's have some grit here <laughs> and be able to persevere on your own and figure out how to do number one and two on your own. Let's look now at coordinate proof. Coordinate proof. A coordinate proof, all it is is just a proof that's done on the coordinate plane and we use variables instead of numbers and the reason we use variables is because if we can prove something using variables then we know it's true for all figures regardless of what numbers that we put into those uh, variables okay so here's an example you have it here but let's go ahead and use the one that we have in your notes because it's nice and big and here's an example of a shape, it's a rectangle, that is placed on the coordinate plane. And notice that we're not given numbers. Uh, yeah, we are given numbers, of course, for the origin, 0, 0. But how many spaces it is out here on the x-axis, uh, we're not told, except other than it is h spaces out here. And so therefore, the coordinate for this point is h comma zero. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because if you had, for example, five, if this was five um, uh, steps out here, or blocks, five blocks out, then the coordinate would be five comma zero. But uh, to make this flexible and applicable to all kinds of uh, figures of this type, that is of a rectangle, let's just make it a variable. So the coordinate at this point is h comma zero. And this uh, length here on the y-axis, let's call that k. So therefore, the coordinates at this point are going to be 0. The uh, x-coordinate is 0. We don't go to the right or to the left. Just go straight up the, the y-axis. And the y-coordinate is going to be k. So the coordinates for this point are 0, comma k. And the coordinates for this point out here, we would go down the x, and we'd, do, we'd go h blocks. And then we go up k blocks. So the coordinate for this point is h comma k. Okay, 
So here's another example that you have in your notes. And actually, I uh, also have it here in your um, uh, notes. So that's easier for us just to look at. Um, tell you what, before we go on to that, let me, yeah, yeah. So, so um, number three, or is it? I don't know what that says there. Maybe four. There is no three. I think I skipped over number three. But uh, um, this is asking for uh, to take this rectangle at the right here and then draw somewhere below here, draw a coordinate grid, and then place this rectangle on that coordinate grid in a different place, not in this first quadrant. Uh, it could be in the second quadrant or third quadrant or fourth quadrant, does not matter. You know, so if you wanted to put it down here, you could do that or over here to the left, you could do that. But I recommend that you have one of the corners in the, uh, or on uh, the origin, that makes it easier. And then use the same lengths. I want the same length of uh, H and the same height of K. And tell me what the coordinates are gonna be for these other three points when you uh, draw that. So draw your, your rectangle down here and give me the coordinates for each of the other three points in addition to the one uh, vertex that's gonna be on uh, the origin. So go ahead and do that for that one. Pause the video. And then let me explain. Um, yeah, let me go over here and explain this guy here for you. So example number four in your textbook, here's another example of a coordinate proof. And we are told that this is a right triangle. Of course, this is the x-axis and y-axis. So those are perpendicular to each other. This makes a 90 degree angle. We're also told that this is an isosceles triangle. So this length here uh, is the same as the length over here. And notice we can see that in the coordinates, that the coordinate for this point K, uh, yeah, no, this point uh, Q, is k comma zero. So the x-coordinate is k. There's k blocks to get out here. And then we go zero blocks up or down. And the coordinates for uh, this point, p, is zero comma k. So your x-coordinate is zero. We don't go to the right or to the left. And we just go up uh, k blocks. Make sense? q, coordinates for point q, is k comma zero coordinates for point P is zero comma K. Now what they're asking us to do is to find the length of the hypotenuse. Here's your right angle across from your right angle is going to be your uh, hypotenuse. So we need to find the length from P to point Q. And you will remember the distance formula. And so we could call this Oh, we want to do it. Yeah, that would be fine. I think uh, point one. They should have written the distance formula. I don't like the way they just start throwing numbers in there. But you remember the distance formula. It's uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And a square root over this entire thing. That is the distance between uh, two points. So if we call this point one, this up here would be x1 and y1. And here, this is point two. So this would be x2 and y2. And does that work out? x2, yeah, that works out. So uh, we plug in, for x2, we plug in the value of k. For x1, we plug in the value of zero. And same thing for y2, plug in, where's y2? Plug in zero. And for y1, plug in k. So you're thinking, hey, that doesn't look very easy. It looks more complicated using these uh, letters instead of numbers. But, but trust me, when we do this, it really helps us because we're able to prove theorems. We're able to prove generalities because uh, if it works with variables, then it will always work for uh, any numbers that we plug into there. So if you subtract zero from k, k minus zero, it's gonna just give you k, that's k squared. And uh, zero minus k gives you negative k, your square. But of course, when you have a negative squared, negative times a negative gives you positive. So now we have k squared plus k squared, which gives, which gives you uh, two k squared. Now we take the square root of everything, 
and the square root of k squared is just k, and this 2 is trapped underneath the evil radical monster. So the length of this hypotenuse is k square root of 2. And now we want to use the midpoint formula and figure out what the midpoint of this, um, or what the coordinates are of this uh, midpoint. And all that we have to do, remember, to, is to find the average. So what is the average of the x-coordinate? Between 0 and k, we add those together and divide by 2. So it's going to be k, 0 plus k, divided by 2, it's going to be k over 2. And since this uh, length here is the same, it's also uh, k, then uh, finding the average of that is uh, 0 plus k divided by 2, so k over 2. So therefore, that's somewhat of a formula for us, um, that whenever you have a isosceles right triangle, then the, uh, the, the distance of the hypotenuse is going to be k times the square root of 2. And the location of your the coordinates of the midpoint are going to be uh, half of k, comma, half of k. That is helpful to us. I, I know it doesn't clear much up much uh, in your mind now, but it is of uh, uh, great use to us in various other proofs, which we will look at in just a minute. But before we do, uh, let's take this uh, triangle and notice on this triangle, when we put it in the coordinate grid, uh, I'm going to need to have actually three different variables. When I did the rectangle, I only needed two variables, but in this case, I need the distance, uh, the length here on the x-axis, that's going to be d, and then I also need though the length out to here to go underneath this other vertex, and that's going to be f, so this distance here is f, whereas the entire distance going down there is d. And then the distance up on the y-axis is going to be g. You see here the, the y-coordinate uh, for this point is, is g. So what they're asking us to do now is for the triangle at right, is it possible to find any of the side lengths without using the distance formula? I just showed you how to use the distance formula. Uh, between any two points even when we have variables and you saw that it can get kind of complicated So is there an ability do we have the ability to find the length of any of these three sides? Without using the distance formula and I just about gave it away to you but uh, explain why you're able to find the length of a side uh, without using the distance formula and also of course um, Tell me what the length of that side is that you are finding. So go ahead and pause the video and, and do that. And then number six, a square has these vertices. Remember, vertex is one corner. More than one corner are vertices. So uh, go ahead and draw a uh, coordinate grid and then draw um, a square on it and label these points and then uh, find the coordinates of the, four, the fourth